Okay, now we go back to the core because I told you earlier that's where the magic happens. Let's learn a little bit about what takes place in the core of the sun that makes the sun a sun, you know. What makes the sun a star that's taking place in the core? The core is the key thing. The sun's core creates energy using a process that we now call the proton-proton chain, otherwise known as the PP chain, okay? When your son, daughter, nephew, niece, or anyone in your family says, can I go PP? Tell them, yes, you can, but before you do, let me teach you what that means. That's when four protons combine and create helium, okay? And the, the child is like, oh, come on, I got to go, I got to go. Before, okay, you, before you go, okay? And this takes place in the sun. Without that, life wouldn't exist. Now you can go. Are you going to tell you? Are you going to tell them that? You, every time they go to PP, teach them this lesson, okay? Because proton, proton chain, without that, the sun couldn't make energy, right? So basically what it's doing on the chemical level, if four hydrogens, it's converting four hydrogens, fusing them together, and creating helium out of that. It's called hydrogen fusion, okay? So it fuses four million tons of hydrogen into helium in one second. Try to visualize that. The sun takes four million tons. I can't even conceive of that number. Four million tons of hydrogen. Every second as we talk about it, the sun is taking these hydrogen atoms, converting them, fusing them together, and forming helium. However, the bad news is the sun has a limited supply of this hydrogen, right? So eventually, is it going to run out? Yeah. And that's what kickstarts the death process of a star when it runs out of this hydrogen, when it can't do this process anymore. Okay? So this is the same procedure that we used when we made the H-bomb. Okay? Have we used the H-bomb on anyone yet? No. Thankfully, not yet, okay? We've used the atomic bomb, right? Atomic bomb uses a completely different process. It's known as fission, atomic fission, okay? Fission takes a uh, uh, uranium atom or plutonium atom, breaks it into parts, right? That's called fission, breaking it down, okay? We used the atomic bomb, unfortunately, on Japan, right? Uh, in the, after the World War II, you know, um, we've used the atomic bomb, but we didn't use the H-bomb yet. The hydrogen bomb is more powerful. It uses fusion, okay? It uses the same process that our sun is using to make life, to give us life. And then humans said, hey, why not? Let's use that same process to destroy life, <laughs> okay? Why not? <laughs> That's the human nature, right? Okay, in five billion years from now, roughly, the hydrogen supply of the sun will no longer exist, or even if it does exist, it, will, it won't be in usable form anymore, and the sun will start dying. Oh, sad news, right? Write it on your iPhone calendars, you know. Put it, iPods, iPhones, put it on your calendar. The sun will take one billion years after that to die. Okay, and then during that process, the sun will start growing, and then we're going to talk about that during the next lectures. What happens to the stars? You know, the sun will grow and become a red giant, and then it will engulf the earth. The earth will burn up. That's what happened to Superman's planet, right? That's why he came here, <laughs> right? In the movie, in the beginning of the movie, you will see that the star is growing and becoming a red giant, right? And then it's engulfing the planet that Superman lives on, and it's burning it up. And then he has to get away, right? But that's a reality. That will happen one, one day to the Earth, right? Let's see here. So going back to the PP chain for a sec, I think this one will show you what the PP chain looks like.
See this, these little wiggly signs there, that's energy. The interesting thing about the cycle is a cycle that continues to happen, you see. Um, I'm sure now after you've explained to the kid about the PP chain, the kid is going to be saying, okay, I forgot about going to the restroom. Show me the chemical reaction you're talking about, the chemistry of what's happening, right? So he's like waiting there for you to show him. And then you show him this slide. The story is going on. He's really dying to see the proton-proton chain. And you say, this is it. H11 plus H11, you see, the sun takes them, fuses it into heavy hydrogen, positron, neutrino. Okay, if this theory is right, we should be able to detect a bunch of positrons coming from the sun and a bunch of neutrinos coming from the sun. And have we detected them? Yeah, we are in the process of, okay? We have neutrino detectors in the Earth that are detecting these neutrinos. Then you have a heavy hydrogen, another hi hydrogen, H23, plus gamma rays. Remember I told you earlier, the sun radiates gamma radiation, but hopefully, thankfully, our atmosphere absorbs these and they don't hit the earth. And then the H23, H23, two light heliums combine, form regular helium, He24, and then byproduct of that reaction is H11, H11, so the cycle can continue, you see? So it's like these two go there and then form there, then you get here, and then these two go back here, they form there. So it just continues on and on and on. And then the E is energy. So continually the sun is producing this energy, okay? So it says we end up with a normal helium nucleus, a total of six hydrogen nuclei went into the reaction. Remember the first two steps had to occur twice in order to produce the two H23s. Well, there were two left at the end, so the net result is the conversion of four hydrogen into one helium nucleus, you see? It's amazing that the stars do this constantly. They are doing this. That's what makes stars different than planets. Planets don't do this stuff, okay? So a star is more like our own lifetime. It has a birth, it lives, gives off energy, dies. Whereas a planet is just like exists. It's a rock, you know? It's not like a living, a living, breathing thing, you know. A star is a living, breathing entity. I mean, it doesn't breathe like we think breathe, but it's like uh, it has a lifetime, you know. Uh, so in some ways, planets are a lot more interesting, you know. The, there are two other processes of creating energy which our sun does not utilize. The CNO cycle, that's this one. So in case the kid is still wanting to, is interested, doesn't want to go PP, you say, there's another cycle called carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle. Uh, the CNO cycle, which dominates at higher temperatures, is more complex, evolving not only carbon, but also nitrogen and oxygen. Each of these elements has more than one form, which differ in their number of neut neutrons. Some of these isotopes are unstable and then spontaneously emit positrons, decaying into other species. Here's the CNO cycle, okay? S carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, so on, so forth. So basically the effect is you end up with energy and helium again, okay? So for our purposes, just remember that the CNO cycle is kind of like the proton-proton chain. It happens at higher temperatures and only heavy mass stars can uh, use this process. Bigger stars whose cores are hotter than 16 million Kelvin can use this process. So our sun will not, never use this process, okay? Bigger stars and hotter stars use this. <clears throat> so it's pretty much the same as PP chain and is using carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen as a catalyst for the reaction. The triple alpha process, that's this one down here. Okay, so this one is different. Our sun will one day use this process. It will never use this one, but it will use this one. 
When a star's hydrogen supply is depleted, its core heats up and it can use this process. So remember earlier I said that our sun will die in 5 billion years, but it will take it 1 billion years to die. Why? Because while it's dying, it still can make energy by using this process. What is it doing? With this process, it's taking helium and it's fusing it into carbon. Okay? So first notice during its lifetime, it's taking hydrogen, fusing it into helium, and then it's taking helium, fusing it into carbon. And the carbon is the stuff of life. Remember earlier I told you the stuff of life is made in the stars? It's taking helium and fusing it into carbon. Our sun will use this when it is dying, when it is in the process of dying. Okay, and the reaction looks like this here. So it takes a helium, H24, He24, forms beryllium, HBE48. Then it takes beryllium, fuses it with helium, forms carbon, gamma rays, plus energy. Okay, and then that's it. So it gives you energy, and then the cycle can continue. But of course, after that, once the helium is done, then the star starts getting closer to dying. Okay, it, can, it only has a certain lifetime. 